for many years through our lively educational programming and our groundbreaking exhibitions, this museum has demonstrated a strong commitment to providing our audiences, the general public, uh, make the uh, uh, policymakers and members of the building industry, a fuller understanding of the complexities and the opportunities of sustainable practices. We are pleased to present this evening a very special program exploring sustainability and the built environment. As we examine the impact of sustainable architecture, construction, and design, we are proud to have the support of the Home Depot Foundation as the museum's official partner in sustainability. Through this partnership, the Home Depot Foundation and the National Building Museum focus on raising public awareness, sharing best practices in sustainability among design and bu building professionals, and using technology to reach a larger audience. One of the partnership's major initiatives is our For the Greener Good program. This adult educational series features the work and the insights of major national and international designers, corporate leaders, academics, and policymakers, and examines a range of energy, construction, economic, and social implications that surround sustainable development. The Foundation's grant enables the museum to produce this series with a live audience in our very own Great Hall, and then further broadcast the series through a variety of multimedia outlets, including the museum's newly designed website. The Foundation is also helping us to walk the talk by directing grant monies toward greening the museum's operational practices, including optimizing and increasing the use of sustainable materials used in our exhibition galleries through the use of low VOC paints and bamboo, bamboo flooring, among other renewable materials. The foundation and their staff, led by Executive Director Kelly Caffarelli, have played an invaluable role here at the museum. They provide key insights and pr project information, support our staff's research efforts, and assist with outreach. This sort of collaboration is indicative of our partnership over the past few years, as their unwavering support has enabled the museum to produce extraordinary programming. And because each of our organizations is devoted to improving affordable housing conditions and sustainable design, I am certain that together our partnership promises remarkable potential for the future. We would like to thank the Home Depot Foundation for their continued support. We are proud of our joint leadership in educating the public about innovations, design excellence, and the societal values of environmentally responsible building. So now it is appropriate and a great pleasure for me to kick off our second year of For the Greener Good series by introducing to you Kelly Caffarelli, the president of the Home Depot Foundation. Kelly? Good evening and thank you, Chase. We really value our partnership with the National Building Museum and want to applaud their efforts not only to educate professionals and children and parents about the benefits of green building, but also for your leadership in the building itself to ensure that the materials they use are sustainable so that this beautiful building will be standing here for 200 more years. And we just love to come here. I don't know how many of you haven't been to the building before, but if this is not an astounding space, I don't know what is. And we're glad to share this jewel with all of you. We're also particularly pleased to be here to listen to the panel tonight and to be with such a knowledgeable and insightful group. And finally, we're just excited to be sharing our awards of excellence and our visionary award winners with you. But first, I have the distinct pleasure of introducing Frank Blake, the CEO of Home Depot. He's been in Washington a good bit in his career, but on behalf of the 300,000 associates of the Home Depot, I have to say we're very glad that he's in Atlanta and is our leader now. Thank you, Frank. Thanks, Thanks Kelly. Uh, and thank you, Chase, for host hosting us this evening. That's terrific. Uh, through the foundation, uh, we make a, a very serious effort to try to develop affordable housing uh, throughout the United States and in other countries. And this evening, we are very proud to be here 
to recognize some of the best examples of affordable homes that are also built responsibly. These homes are energy efficient, conserve water, use durable materials, and provide access to transportation and green spaces. You know, it, it sounds simple, but we recognize that it's very difficult to balance affordability with sustainability. And that's why it's a particular pleasure to be here tonight to recognize and celebrate some of the very innovative and creative work of the nonprofit sector in building affordable housing to green standards. And I, I hope you've had a chance to see some of these projects. They really are impressive. And so what I'd like to do now is to turn it back over to Kelly to present the awards. Kelly? Great. So, we are excited to finally get to the main event this evening. At the Home Depot and the Home Depot Foundation, we have a huge amount of respect. That's the wrong thing. And we have a huge We do. Of but that's we later. For what? On with the show. On with we're very excited to be here. We're celebrating our fifth anniversary, and in five short years, we've invested $70 million in homes across the country. We built 40,000 homes and, built, and planted over a million trees. And I just want to stop for a second with this photo. I love this photo. This is a real homeowner returning to her home in past Christiane, Mississippi, after Hurricane Katrina. That is a long road that she went through, and she finally got back home. And I'm very proud to tell you that that home is still standing after Gustav and Ike. Now, while our focus is on the production and preservation of healthy, affordable housing, we're committed to improving the overall health of our communities which means taking a long-term, comprehensive approach to building healthy homes, communities, and neighborhoods. Because we take this comprehensive approach when thinking about where a family lives, we also support local communities by investing in the planning and preservation of trees along streets, in parks, and in schoolyards, the building and refurbishment of community play spaces, and the revitalization of school facilities. And while we're a relatively young organization, we're very proud of our accomplishments from the last five years, and we're looking forward to keeping that momentum going and to accomplishing even more. In fact, we've made a 10-year pledge to invest $100 million to build 100,000 homes and plant 3 million trees in America. Thank you. And you know, while we like to count houses and brick and mortar, and we like to say how many trees that we've planted, we understand that the real story of our impact is in the success of the families that are able to live in those homes and those healthy communities. So four years ago, we set down this path to help build, bring sustainability to affordable housing. And people kept asking, can you really build green and still be affordable? And we kept seeing examples of how you could do it. And we knew people could do it if they had examples to inspire them and for them to aspire to replicate. And so we began the awards program. The winners of the awards over the last four years have proven us right that people are building green, they're building affordable, and they're doing it in amazing ways. We go through a process each year to select the winners of our awards, and we spend two days with an amazing panel of experts who passionately and insightfully debate the programs that have been nominated and to try to decide what excellence really means in affordable housing. Each project goes through a rigorous process, taking into account all facets of building, the design, the construction, the durability, and the performance. But we also look beyond the building itself and beyond the lot line to also consider the impact on the community, the financing structure, and whether or not it can be replicated in other communities. Now, on to the awards. 
Our 2008 national runner-up in the home ownership category is Colshan Community Land Trust for the Matai Place Project located in Bellingham, Washington. The project involved a highly integrated design process involving 14 LEED certified homes that are both affordable and green. And accepting the award is Paul Schischler, Executive Director of the Community Land Trust. Thank, Thank you. you so much. And now the national winner in the home ownership category is Madison Area Community Land Trust for the Troy Gardens Project located in Madison, Wisconsin. We have a short video that I hope will bring this project to life for everyone. Troy Gardens is a, an important project to Madison as really a, a national model. So many progressive ideas that are there in a relatively small space, and it's right in the city of Madison. I think that there's a few things that make Troy Gardens unique as compared to other affordable housing projects. It doesn't look institutional. It appeals to all potential buyers, and it's green and affordable. It's really great just to see, um, you know, first of all, what it's done for the community, and just the whole idea of being able to provide the 30 units of, of mixed income housing here within, within the city. We're right adjacent to 26 acres of open space that has a community, a five acre community farm, about five acres of community gardens and a prairie. The one thing about building green is and being energy conscious, I think it starts in the design and there are a number of things in designing that you can do that don't cost money. They're just good design thinking that leads to energy efficient use. Well, these buildings feature a whole host of energy efficient technologies. Uh, they feature energy efficient furnaces, energy efficient lighting and appliances. Uh, but I think one of the greatest things about it is that it's also um, uh, close in to the city of Madison and so people can ride their bike if they choose or they can take public transit. It's not only the costs of running the buildings or operating the units, but it's also the overall cost of living. Troy Gardens proves that it's possible to deal with these high energy prices in a way that's really very positive. No, no one's sacrificing quality of life. As a matter of fact, their quality of life is better. Uh, for living in Troy Gardens. The consultants and the architect did a very good job up front planning for the future. If somebody in one of their units decided that uh, maybe they you know, couldn't afford solar at this point, five years down the road, it's not, oh shoot, now I can't do solar. Solar Ready is already in their apartment, so all they need to do is add the panels. And so the folks who live here are in a situation where they can afford to be here now and they can afford to be here 50 years from now. Affordable housing can also be beautiful and it can be environmentally responsible. I think the old traditional model of affordable housing is housing that's just kind of slapped up and that's all you deserve. If, if you can't afford to buy a market rate home, then this is what you get. The whole goal of the Troy Gardens project was to create a site where a group of people could come together and feel like they have an identity. Most of these ideas didn't come from city government, they didn't come from city hall, they came from the community. And, uh, and that's another reason I think that this is such a unique and successful project, it has tremendous community support. If this project were recognized by the Home Depot Foundation, I think it would bring national attention, well-deserved national attention, uh, to this project. The recognition from the Home Depot Foundation resonates on a number of levels for us. Uh, locally, it, uh, it validates what we're doing here. I think people from around the country could study it, could come here, uh, experience it, talk to the people who actually made it happen, and may, maybe take some of those good ideas back to their hometowns. We have a great need for affordable housing here in Madison and around the country. And with every successful project like Troy Gardens, we're able to show the rest of the country that it can be done and that it can be done well. In Troy Gardens, we made a commitment to do green and do it in an affordable way, which meant we couldn't do everything we wanted, but, but I think we did about 90% of what we wanted. And, um, and we hope people copy what we did. That was one of our goals. We're very...
We're very proud to recognize the project with a grant of $75,000. And Greg Rosenberg, congratulations. Now we move to the rental category. This is a hard category every year because there's such fabulous projects going on all across the country. Our 2008 national runner-up is the first fully sustainable apartment community in California. It's notable for having 836 panels producing 142 kilowatts of energy and was recognized by the California Energy Commission as the first zero energy new home in the state. Please join me in congratulating Community Housing Works, Sue Reynolds. I've always wanted a drum roll, but I don't have a drum roll. The national winner in the rental category is Mercy Housing Lakefront for the Margot and Harold Schiff residences located in Chicago. Please join me in watching this video. The Schiff Residences is a permanent supportive housing project. Uh, it consists of 96 studio units. They're about 300 square feet, and they're designed to give people a sort of a first housing option. The idea here was to incorporate a very good location, but in a place where there had been a public housing experiment that hadn't turned out the way people had hoped. Around here, one time it was, it was bad. You couldn't walk the streets. So this location is on the near north side in the middle of the Cabrini Green redevelopment area. Mercy Housing Lakefront went one step further from our initial vision and decided to hire a world-class architect, Helmut Jan, to really give this corner, this building, a presence. I saw this was an interesting challenge. The interesting challenge was to prove that a project like this doesn't have to be of a lower quality, that it can contribute to the life of the users and it can also contribute to the city. Creating a healthy building was one of the important steps in the, in the integrated design to put this building together. Here, everything is filtered, the air is clean. Even the windows, they regulate the sun that we get. It's nice. We brought in two forms of alternative energy. Um, one, the wind turbines on the roof. They generate electricity, which supplements the current needed for the uh, common area lighting in the building. Also on the roof are solar thermal panels, which convert sun to heat. And that is then used to supplement the domestic hot water needs of the building. This is an incredibly energy efficient building and if you have an energy efficient base to start with, then by putting renewable energy into the building, you obviously create even a cleaner energy building. We have a rainwater harvesting system where the water does not permeate the ground, is collected in a cistern downstairs. That water is then recycled to irrigate the landscaping we've put in. Um, there's also the first instance in Chicago of a gray water system. This reduces our clean water demand in half. This is something that can be replicated elsewhere. It is so important to build a building, an affordable housing building, where the operating costs there, there can be held at a level that is manageable. Affordable housing does not have to be synonymous with st substandard housing. Nice affordable housing with the support of peace in place can definitely make a difference in residents' lives. And that's where it's more than a roof because residents can come down here and get the help that they need to get back into the workforce, to go back to school, and to and just improve their quality of life. We say in the design field our, our goal is to improve the quality of people's lives, but it's really in a, in a project like this, 
you can really see that it did make a difference. The Home Depot Foundation Award of Excellence will demonstrate to other for-profit and not-for-profit developers that there is support for this type of project. Sending the message to the city, to the country, that people who are starting over deserve great architecture as well. There's a place for everybody in our city, and certainly this building conveys that. Please join me in congratulating Cindy Haller. Frank, will you help us with the Visionary Award this year? Yeah, thanks, thanks, Kelly. Th those are just spectacular projects. I mean, that is that is really exciting, and uh, it's it's a great pleasure to be here this evening to uh, hand out our Visionary Award. I know I was here last year, that was the first annual, so second annual, we're actually getting this to be a habit. Uh, last year's winner was here, uh, Bart Harvey was truly an exceptional individual. The winner this year is equally just an exceptional individual, so it's, it's a, it truly is one of those things where it's a privilege to recognize the, the person uh, who we see as a true leader in bringing pocketbook and health benefits of green building together to families of all incomes. It's our honor and pleasure to recognize this year's winner, Richard Fedrizi, founding chairman of the U.S. Green Building Council and current president and CEO of the council. Under Richard's leadership, the council has undertaken a far-reaching agenda that has tripled its membership broadened its influence, and cemented its role as a leadership voice in the global sustainability movement. Rick has spearheaded a number of critical initiatives, including a major refinement of the LEED rating system, which now addresses the unique needs of homes, neighborhoods, schools, hospitals, the retail sector, and large property owners. Rick's passion for collaboration as a driver for rapid change is evidenced in the Green Building Council's work here in the United States and abroad with such organizations as the Clinton Global Initiative and the International Codes Council. Rick has also championed making sure green building standards are applicable to affordable housing projects and preservation is evidenced by his partnerships with our foundation enterprise community partners, LISC, and other national housing intermediaries. In fact, under Rick's leadership, the pilot for Lead for Homes included over 50 nonprofit building developers, and there are now more than 1,668 units of affordable Lead registered housing. Rick is a leader who understands that it is essential that we bring the economic health and quality of life benefits of green building to all families. So please join me in watching this video. I'm Rick Fedrizi, President and CEO of the U.S. Green Building Council. In the beginning, we were trying more than anything to help people understand what green building was and why it was important. The Home Depot Foundation is proud to be recognizing Rick's contributions to green building. Not just green building generally, but more particularly in the affordable housing sector. I think that Rick Fabrizi is a most deserving recipient of this award. I'm delighted to be in this company. The value of the U.S. Green Building Council and our mission is to transform the marketplace. When people say to me, I don't have the money to build a green building, my first thought is, so then you have the money to build a bad building. There's no question that we need to do affordable housing in a completely different way, and we can do it in a way that helps in the environmental challenges that the world has today. We are living in a time where all bets are off. 
And that's why we at the U.S. Green Building Council are really excited about our contribution, which is LEED. When you use LEED, you have the ability to affect, you know, 50% less energy, 50% less water, less toxins, less waste. They're just better buildings. With Rick's vision for green building, more and more families of low to moderate income are benefiting from the monthly savings of a home that's efficient and safe and healthy to live in. It's the buildings we live in, work in, play in, learn in, heal in. I think one of the most stunning applications of green building technologies is in the area of schools. It's schools that have a lot of daylight, good air quality, non-toxic materials, great acoustics, and in the green schools that are being built, the reports coming back are just amazing. We've gone past the point of asking the question, would you build green, to the point of we're saying, why would you not build green? This is not the flavor of the month marketing program. This is the future. I thought it was wonderful that the Home Depot Foundation came out with a visionary award. I think Rick is a terrific leader. He has a distinguished career. I think he is a visionary. Ladies and gentlemen, it's an honor to award Rick Fedrizi the Home Depot Foundation's 2008 Visionary Award. Thank you, Frank, and thank you, Kelly. That is, is quite an honor. I am I'm stunned. This is just, just a, a terrific um, honor for uh, myself, but more importantly, uh, my organization and its ability to uh, reach out and collaborate with other organizations in such an effective way. Um, we have been blessed with the opportunity to work with the Home Depot Foundation, to work with community enterpri enterprise community partners and, and people that just understand that there is something in this world that's bigger than any one of us. And that is truly why we are here. We had a good idea, and I, I have to turn around this, the thanks and the congratulations to the Home Depot Foundation and, and organizations like um, Enterprise Community Partners because we entered this arena thinking in terms of commercial buildings. And then we expanded on to different applications in schools and healthcare and other. But these organizations have helped us embrace the affordable housing agenda and how important that is. When you really start to understand for the first time that, that health and uh, safety and non-toxic and emotional uh, restoration of, of your life can happen within our homes, you really can understand that there's not one segment of society that should not have that. It is a basic human right for individuals to have their child go to bed at night with, with a, a room that's non-toxic with clean air and has the, the tremendous benefit that green building brings to it. Green building is just a label and it helps people really rally around an idea that we're doing things better and differently and more intelligently than we have at least over the last 30 or 40 years. And programs like this really help us understand what our place is in this area and how we can best benefit those that need it. When you start to look at projects, and I've talked just recently to some people that are living in, in a Home Depot Foundation um, inspired project in the Bronx, and this is a place in Bronx, New York, where the, the childhood asthma rate is the highest in the country. And when you start to look at the fact that, that parents and teachers are now calling an organization like the U.S. Green Building Council and saying thank you because my child now lives in a house that's green. And my child with severe asthma is having the first uninterrupted night's sleep that they have ever had. Those are phone calls you cannot get away from. That is what we are here to do. This is not about, about creating green spaces for movie stars and helping people just understand that green is this new exciting wave. This is about getting back to our values and thinking more about our lives like our grandparents thought about our lives, more about sense of place, about community, about taking care of those that need our help, and ultimately we all rise together. 
So thank you very much, Home Depot Foundation, for the tremendous work that you're doing in this wonderful award. I can't wait to share it with the 180 heroes that I get the chance to work with every day over at the USGBC. Thank you so much.